7.5 practice problems. The table above shows data for two reactions carried out in two separate evacuated one liter rigid containers at a constant temperature of 298 Kelvin. To each container, 0.5 moles of the appropriate reactants were added and the reaction was allowed to reach equilibrium. Based off of this information, which of the following correctly compares the relative concentrations of bromine uh, chloride and nitrogen monoxide present inside their respective containers at equilibrium? So here we are looking at our uh, relative products, and then we are uh, comparing the uh, uh, constant, equilibrium constant between the two. Now you can see that the equilibrium constant for reaction two is much, 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 much smaller, which means that the concentration of my product is going to be very small relative to the concentration of the reactants, since it is product of a reactants, versus here where you have um, a larger uh, K, which means that you are going to have a larger concentration of the uh, bromine chloride. So I will uh, select or get rid of any answer choices that tell me the opposite. I am going to have a larger concentration of the bromine chloride over the uh, nitrogen monoxide. And then I will choose between these two based off of their reasoning. So B says um, that uh, has an appropriate relationship because bromine and chlorine are larger molecules that can collide more frequently to form products. That is not why um, we were able to determine that uh, the concentration of the uh, bromine chloride is higher uh, just based off of the equilibrium constant. And option choice C says because of the march, much larger equilibrium constant in reaction uh, one it means that there is a much higher concentration of products present uh, compared to that of reaction two. That is going to be correct, again, because it is products of our reactants. If we have a uh, larger uh, concentration of products uh, in our numerator, then we will have a larger K. At night, an equilibrium a uh, reaction between two different nitrogen compounds generates uh, dinitrogen pentoxide in the atmosphere, as represented below. The mixture of nitrogen trioxide and a tenfold excess of nitrogen dioxide is placed into a rigid container at a constant temperature and allowed to reach equilibrium. Which of the following provides a correct comparison um, of the equilibrium concentrations of these chemical species and why? So um, I am going to look at my equilibrium constant. I'm gonna see that this is a very, very small number. And so that means that relative to uh, the um, concentrations of my reactants, I am going to have a very small amount of product. Okay, um, so I'm going to eliminate any of those choices that have the um, product as a larger value. And then um, I can also eliminate C because this is comparing uh, two of my uh, reactants, which are in the denominator. So that is not um, very obvious based off of the equilibrium constant. So looking between A and uh, D, um, I'm going to say that my um, concentration of my products are very small because a small value of K indicates that the consumption of the reactants is favored in the equilibrium. That is not true. Um, if I have a very small K, that means that I have a relatively large concentration of my reactants and a very relatively small concentration of my products. So option choice D states that because the uh, small K value indicates the formation of products is not favored at equilibrium. That is correct. Um, if it was favored, then I would have a larger concentration of the uh, dinitrogen pentoxide, which I very clearly do not since I have such a small K. In one molar hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid is a nearly 100% dissociated, as represented by the equation above. Which of the following best explains why in 0.1 molar um, hydrocyanic acid, less than 1% of the hydrocyanic acid is dissociated? Now, um, the 
Um, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, which means that it is going to highly dissociate um, between uh, whenever it is dissolved into water, whereas hydrocyanic acid is a weak acid, meaning again, that we have a very small amount that has dissociated. If we have the um, overall reaction between um, hydrocyanic acid and water uh, producing the uh, cyanide and the hydronium here. Uh, if I have a very small amount of the product here, then that means that my K is going to be very small. Um, and so looking through here, I'm going to find something similar to that. Um, a says that the cyanide ion is not very soluble in water and a solid precipitate would form if the um, hydrocyanic acid dissociated. So um, a solid precipitate would potentially push the uh, reaction toward completion because that would um, remove it from uh, aqueous nature, so no. Uh, compared to hydrochloric acid solution, the concentration of the hydrocyanic acid solution is much too dilute to achieve 100% dissociation. Um, no. Uh, dissociation is not going to be relative to the concentration, or the rate of dissociation is not going to be relative to the concentration. Option C says the equilibrium constant for the dissociation of hydrocyanic acid is much smaller than that of for the dissociation of hydrochloric acid. Similar to what I said um, above, that the concentration over here is going to be relatively small, and therefore we have a small k. And then option choice D says the um, hydrocyanic acid reacts with water to form a basic solution and the high concentration of hydroxide interferes with the dissociation process. Uh, no, um, it forming a, uh, it being a conjugate base um, is not what is happening here and also is not uh, going to be uh, what we're talking about in terms of dissociation. So uh, just that the equilibrium constant is much lower is going to be our best and only answer choice here. For the reaction represented above, the value for the equilibrium constant K is 240 at 25 degrees Celsius. From this information, uh, correct deductions about the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius include which of the following? So um, our uh, Equilibrium constant being 240 means that we have a rather large concentration of our uh, products and rather small uh, concentration of our reactants. That is the only thing that um, is really going to uh, let us know what is happening here. Uh, so as I look for through these three options, the reaction is quite rapid. Uh, the equilibrium constant does not tell me the speed of the reaction, so I can eliminate anything that includes one. Number two says the product is favored over the reactants at equilibrium. That is going to be true. We are going to have a rather large concentration of our products. So I'm going to eliminate anything that does not include number two. And then number three states that the reaction is endothermic. That is not... Um, what is indicated based off of the um, equilibrium constant, endothermic or exothermic processes um, are separate from um, our overall equilibrium constants. A one mole sample of X and one mole sample of Q are introduced in an evacuated uh, rigid 10 liter container and allowed to each equilibrium at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, according to the equation above. At equilibrium, which of the following is true about the concentration of the gases? Um, so as I look through here, um, all of them are gases, so that's fun. And then uh, I am going to look at my overall K value. Now this K is rather large, so this is uh, times five, so that would be four zeros, so 130,000. Okay. Don't be tricked that just because it's in scientific notation means that it's a small K. We have a large, large K. And so um, my products, I have a large amount of my products, whereas I have a very small amount of my reactant. Uh, so looking here, um, they are definitely not going to be equal across um, reactant and 
product there. Um, Q being equal to half that of X uh, is not necessarily true. Um, at equilibrium. However, C states that R and Z are going to be um, equal and that um, overall the concentrations of R and Z are going to be larger than that of Q. That is definitely true and they are definitely not all equal. So option choice C is my best choice because again um, my uh, coefficients here state that these are going to be in uh, relative, um, uh, relatively the same concentration, and then I have that they are going to be much larger than the concentration of Q, uh, and that is evidenced by my K. A two mole sample of carbon monoxide and a two mole sample of water are introduced into a previously evacuated 100 liter rigid container and the temperature is held constant at the, uh, as the reaction represented above reaches equilibrium. Which of the following is true about the equilibrium? Um, so as I look through here, um, they are all gases, okay? And then I see that my K is um, going to be, again, rather large, uh, 1500, okay? Which means that I am going to have um, a larger amount of product versus my amount of reactant. And so I will go ahead and look here. Um, comparing uh, reactant to reactant and product to product, um, not very helpful. Also, all of the coefficients are going to be the same. So A is gonna be eliminated. Uh, B st states that water, which is a reactant, should be larger than that of a product, which is definitely not true. Uh, C states that the product should be larger than the concentration of the reactant, which is true. And then D states that they should all be equal. Um, that would be happening if K was equal to just one, but that's not true here. So um, our concentration um, of our product is going to be larger than the concentration of our reactant as evidenced by the large K. For the system represented above, oxygen and ozone initially are at 0.15 molar and 2 molar respectively. Which of the following best predicts what would occur as the system approaches equilibrium at 570 Kelvin? So I'm going to look um, at this K here and I'm going to see that it is incredibly small. So since the um, um, amount of uh, my K there, my equilibrium constant, is so small, that means that I am going to have a teeny, teeny, tiny amount of ozone versus a rather large amount of just oxygen present once we reach equilibrium. Um, and so I am going to um, go ahead and figure that out. Now, currently, um, we are at uh, 0 0.15. Uh, molar and 2.5 molar um, for our initial concentrations. This is going to very much push in the opposite direction. We are going to uh, go ahead and reverse this reaction and start creating just oxygen and uh, majorly increase the concentration of oxygen and majorly decrease the um, amount of ozone at equilibrium. So um, anything that says that ozone is going to increase, we're going to go ahead and eliminate there. And then we're just looking between B and D. The amount of ozone will decrease because uh, Q is less than that of uh, K. That is uh, very much not true. Currently, at this time, I have a very high concentration of um, ozone. And remember, again, it would be 2.5. Uh, to the power of 2 divided by uh, 0 0.15 to the power of 3 as my Q. Um, and my K is going to be very, 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 very tiny, um, whereas my Q is rather large because, again, this concentration of um, ozone is rather high here. So um, option D, which states that the amount of ozone will decrease because Q is greater than that of K, is going to be my answer choice.